Hey guys, so I have an update for you today. So in my previous video, I had mentioned that I finally got the H710 uh, with the part number 5CT60, which is this guy here on the left. Uh, I finally got this guy to uh, take the IT mode firmware from 2308. And that I also mentioned that I had this other H710 that has a different part number. It's uh, MCR5X. And for whatever reason, I could not get this thing flashed. Well, I finally figured it out, and I finally got this to take the 2308 um, IT mode firmware. And it's been an interesting um, journey here. So I'm going to show you what's so different. This, these two, you know, they're both H710s from Dell. And if you d flash the Dell firmware, you can flash the exact same firmware on both of them, and they work just fine. But you know, I think Dell's firmware update might be doing something a little uh, behind the scenes that isn't exactly obvious. But when I'm, you know, trying to put LSI firmware on these guys, they behave completely differently. And I finally figured out what is causing that. And so I'm going to I'm going to get on the computer uh, and I'm going to show you uh, what's different and that I finally got the uh, the IT mode firmware to run on this, but. It's not the same IT mode firmware as this guy, so it's a little bit different. There's a caveat here. I'm going to tell you what that is, and I'm going to show you that um, I've got the IT mode firmware running, and I'll give you a couple of hints on how to do that if you want to do this yourself, okay, if you happen to have one of these. But um, and you'll find out later, but I actually don't recommend that you buy an MCR5X uh, H710 to flash the IT mode firmware, okay? Actually, I don't, buy, I don't recommend you buy this guy at all. And I'll tell you why in a second here. So, all right, um, let's go to the next segment. And I'll show you what is so unique about this guy. All right. All right, so here I am. I'm logged into the server. Uh, this is my R720 XT. And I have one of the H710 cards installed in here. And this is in particular the one with the five, uh, oh, sorry, no, the MCR5X part number. And this is the one that I had a lot of difficulty flashing to IT mode, um, although I had successfully done it many times with the other one, which had part number 5CT6D. So I want to show you what the difference is. I finally figured it out, okay? So um, first of all, let me just kind of show you this controller is here, okay? So this controller, this is the uh, H710 Mini Monolithic. Uh, and as you can see, I already have IT firmware on it. And this is the one that I had uh, a lot of problems with before, which was the MCR5X part. So you'll notice, um, for one, I have IT mode firmware here, and it's the usual uh, version, you know, P20 and the BIOS and everything, but you'll notice something a little bit different here. You'll see that the product ID and board name is 9205-8E. Okay, so, if you guys know how LSI uh, model numbers work, uh, this 8E means that this firmware was originally for a 8 port, uh, 8 SAS lane uh, external card. And obviously this is not one of those cards, but the firmware works here nonetheless. I don't think it, you know, electrically it's identical, so the firmware just kind of works. It doesn't really know if there's an external or internal connection. It's just electrical wires going in or out. So um, this is one of the key factors here. And you know, if, if you are familiar with uh, what this firmware is, this firmware is the firmware for the 2308, but it's not the usual one, which was the 9207-8, right? Um, this firmware was for an early revision of the 2308, okay? And you'll, you'll see that right here. You see how uh, on the controller here it says SAS 2308B0 in parentheses? This is revision B0. And if you, I don't have this in RAID, uh, in, with a Regamate, uh, sorry, Mega RAID uh, firmware anymore, but if you had that and you ran the Mega CLI tool to pull out all the information about the chip, you will also find there's a line in there that says chip revision B0. Okay? So this is the critical difference that this chipset is an older version that uh, is labeled B0 and the normal firmware, the 9207 firmware, doesn't run on this chipset. 
it only uh, you have to use this special one um, from LSI the 9205-8E this is the only firmware that I could find that was designed to run on this older chipset uh, directly from LSI they didn't really sell any other card uh, with this older 2308 chipset uh, other than the 8 port external version but from other vendors uh, in I guess you obviously from Dell uh, they this chipset this older B0 revision was used for a variety of other cards so like in in the case of Dell this H710 I believe uh, HP also had an H221 uh, which was an external card uh, and confusingly over there they they sold that uh, and labeled it differently so yeah that's just all I'll make another video someday about the craziness of uh, LSI you know uh, controller names versus the names that are used by uh, the OEMs like HP Dell and so on yeah, that's just a whole nother world of insanity there um, but anyway this is the only firmware that I could find that could run on this uh, if you want IT mode on it okay now maybe you're thinking like hey great so as, as long as we can have IT mode we're good to go right well not quite so this is uh, at PCI address um, 03 here so let me kind of show you something about this that's kind of interesting and explains why it's so particular about which firmware uh, would run or wouldn't run on it so this is at address 03 and I'm gonna pull out this information here okay so this is the really interesting part um, that is it, like a critical difference and I, I said earlier I wouldn't recommend that you buy this card uh, necessarily but and here's why all right look at the link capability the speed is 5 giga transfers per second and the width is uh, 8 PCI lane so that's normal but the speed is five giga transfers per second this is not the, the speed that's connected at this is the link capability what it's actually capable of all right so if you recognize this that means this is a PCIe 2.0 card the other H710 the 5 CT6D that I've successfully flashed and now have listed in my store for sale on eBay is a PCIe 3.0 card that does eight giga transfers per second Okay, so this older revision, this revision uh, B0 of the 2308 is a PCIe 2.0 card. And that means that your PCI bus here is going to be limited to about 4 gigabytes per second. Okay, whereas the other H710 um, is a PCIe 3.0, which will give you about, uh, you know, 8 gigabytes or giga transfers per second so I think it comes out to something like 7.8 gigabytes per second on the PCI bus so that's one of the critical differences here and I didn't notice this at first so I've, I was trying to put the 9207 uh, firmware on this uh, card that has this older chipset that doesn't support PCI 3.0 and gosh I mean that really explains all the problems I, I, I ran into issues where I was getting kernel panics and the system was spontaneous rebooting and all sorts of craziness that was going on there and so this I think kind of finally explains it um, so anyway you know I wouldn't recommend buying buying this particular H710 to flash to IT mode um, again just to be clear this is the MCR 5x Dell part number okay I wouldn't recommend it but let's say you happen to have one and you want to make use of it anyway so in that case yes you can run IT mode firmware on this card you just uh, two things okay that I learned uh, is that one obviously you have to run the firmware that will work on this older revision B0 chipset and that is if you're getting it from LSI it is the 9205-8E uh, that's the model you want to look for that's the IT mode uh, firmware that you want to look for on Broadcom's website if you want to put it on this particular card okay and then the second thing is the SBR on this card is different uh, than the one on the other H710 and so that was one of my other confusion now I really struggled getting that H710 uh, with IT mode uh, working with the 2308 firmware because 
the SBR was so drastically different from the older SAS 2008 uh, cards that I've been messing with a lot. So that took me a long time. I think I told you guys it took me about five weeks to finally find, um, uh, finally get one card flashed with the 2308 firmware. And then I started, you know, messing around with this card with the uh, part MCR 5X, and I was getting all sorts of other problems there. And turns out the SBR on this one is also different. Okay, so uh, if you have this, you know, be careful. Um, this requires an SBR, and and I, I'll tell you guys uh, straight up, probably the easiest way is if you can find somebody who has the 9205-8E card uh, that can pull the SBR off of that for you. Okay, just do that. Like, I, you know, when I was doing the other H710, I I was using a hex editor and messing around with stuff until I finally got it right. So that's why it took me forever. And, uh, you know, in this case, I was just like, wow, I'm not going to mess with this because uh, I was having so many problems with this. And finally, I, I um, found somebody who had a 90, uh, 9205AD card um, and shared with me the SBR. And I basically just used that. Uh, well, of course, you know, all the caveats... Uh, you know, of modifying the PCI IDs to match what Dell wants. Okay, I mean, take take the SBR and modify that part and update the checksum. Um, then it'll work on this card. Okay, so that's the critical difference here, and this is why the MCR five X uh, doesn't take the normal uh, not twenty three hundred eight firmware. That's why I had so many problems with it, and it's also why I don't recommend that you actually buy this. Um, you might as well buy the newer. Um, part with the the part number 5 CT6D and uh, by the way that has chip revision D1 so uh, it's pretty clear that there are very different cards um, but you know if you just look for the Dell uh, model of H710 mini yeah you're going to get one or the other who knows which one you're gonna get so you really have to pay attention to the part number specifically uh, if you want the PCI 3.0 version, okay? I didn't know this at first, and that's why it's, I've been struggling with this, and I finally kind of saw the difference and uh, sharing with you guys so you don't run into the same mistake as uh, me. Uh, and then on that note, you know, uh, not having not known this prior, I actually bought um, a, few, uh, a few of these, you know, intending to hopefully flash them and put them on my store, but obviously, um, you know, I don't think they're that great. But I do have them flashed, and I'm selling them on my store at a uh, discount, a pretty heavy discount. Basically, I just kind of want to get some money back on this. Um, so, you know, if you're okay with a PCI 2.0 speed, you know, maybe you're not using SSDs and you don't think you're really going to exceed 4 gigabytes per second, then this card is perfectly fine for that purpose, okay? And uh, so anyway, I have those on my store. I'm not going to get any more of these. Whatever I have on hand, I'm, I, you know, I'm just going to sell them. Um, and so they're on my store, uh, and I'll leave a link in the description for you. Uh, heavily discounted compared to all the other cards I have. So you know, if you want them, uh, and you think that you know the PCI 2.0 is fine for you, um, you know, so this is kind of a limited time offer. Go ahead and pick them up, okay? And so anyway, I just wanted to share that with you guys. Uh, what the difference is and if you do have one of these on hand, you know, you just make came with a server you bought and you just want to make use of it. Um, hopefully this video gives you uh, all the hints that you need uh, to figure out how to flash this. And, you know, you won't be spending as much time as I did on figuring this one out. Alright, so anyway, that's it guys. Uh, have a good day. And uh, if you like this video, please hit the like for me and uh, make sure to subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. All right. Bye-bye.